Okay, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, what a nice turn up. Um, the presentation, uh, we try to make it a bit uh, like practical. I mean, there is a lot of things that is being taught about uh, diversity, like uh, I think we all know. So it's a bit uh, our experiences, our learnings, and try to give you some tips. There's going to be a little bit of graphs, but uh, not so much. And um, we hope you enjoy it. Yeah, and maybe to start who we are, my name is Anka. I'm, uh, I'll tell you mo a little bit more about myself on the next page. And then we have Chris. Uh, just to tell a little bit about us, we have met four years ago working at IKEA together. We, had ha we have become very good friends because we were very much passionate about technology and we started together a big transformation at IKEA. And while we go there, we understood how difficult it is, in a way, to be women in tech as a unicorn in IKEA. And IK is a nice place where we look at the really equality and gender equality. But then we have we are sharing the passion. Here is moved away from IKEA. She works now in another company. She will tell more about that. But our uh, roads are getting together, and we want to share our experience. So if we move to the next slide, um, this is our agenda for today. It's a little bit of uh, sharing our experience sharing our journeys, uh, sharing some data so you understand that it's not in our imagination, and also giving you some tips how we have overcome different uh, blocks on our road. And then also we want to help you, so we have some good slides in the end. Uh, Chris? Also, um, we start with a disclaimer. Things are in uh, black and white anymore, like uh, it's not the war of the sexes, men and women, and uh, we are against each other, and. Uh, what is more, like uh, gender is diverse. I mean, and is we live in a non-binary world. There is, a, and actually, like maybe being a woman is even easier than the people that does identify as the usual binary. Um, we grew up uh, in a binary world, right? And uh, uh, I try to be proper in my language, but if I am not, uh, I hope that nobody feels offended. Um, basically, like uh, the person that has the privilege or like the stereotype that has the, the privilege is the cisgender male. That is the, the males that identify with being a male. Um, but uh, I guess any other person with, uh, that identifies with other gender, being woman, being non-binary, being uh, fluid, uh, might experience some diversity, like some diversity issues at work. So I think like even though we might be incorrectly using the term woman, uh, we want to include uh, all the group that is not the cisgender male. And we try to be proper in the language, but excuse us if that's not the case all the time. Uh, we are all biased. <laughs> yes, and also it's true. It's like it's not only them that are biased against the rest. It's not a war. Like uh, we all, um, women also have the bias against women or trans uh, or uh, like uh, we all have that in our heads. Let's start a little bit with the presentation. So I'm Romanian. I have moved to Sweden many, many years ago. Sorry for still speaking English because I worked in most of the <laughs> English speaking companies. Uh, where my passion comes is it's actually in technology. I have been working a lot in uh, companies, mo mobile phones, Ericsson, Sony Mobile, Merce Line, and now at IKEA. And I think if I have to define my career was about bringing technology to the people, changing their life. I have maybe invented the first mobile phone, the first GPS. So it's really exciting thing that I've done in my career. But with the age coming, I also get the passion about leadership and how you bring teams together and how you de develop business through good, good uh, great people. Uh, so this is my passion now about transformation, about you, know, you grow in the career, you go on up in the ladder, and how you bring women to you to, to show the power we have. Um, from a... Um, from my personal life, I live in Lund, I am married, and I have two boys, teenagers, maybe even older than teenagers, they are out, out of the house now. Uh, Chris, about you? Yeah, I have uh, uh, two children, two small children, so still uh, at home and I'll give in a lot of work. Um, I studied computer science, I programmed for many years, and I did video games for like many, many years. And then at some point I was really like done with making video games. So I went to <laughs> I went to IKEA is where uh, where I met uh, where I met Anka, and then actually I realized I would really like video games, and I was very happy <laughs> doing video games, <laughs> and then uh, uh, I went back to video games is what I'm doing uh, uh, nowadays. Through all this period, I worked in anything in technology you can imagine. I've been programming, I've been doing project management, I've been director, I've been uh, like uh, so many names for the things I've been doing. I've been organizing uh, teams, planning, uh, doing many things. I worked in um, 
Yeah, I, I interactive, I do Square Unity. Uh, nowadays, uh, I work um, as executive producer and take care of like the a proprietary game engine that we developed in the company. So basically, I take care of the technology that is used in the in the company. And then, uh, um, in my spare time, uh, I I tend to have to participate in mentorship programs. So usually with women, uh, with universities, and the and different programs, and then uh, I also volunteer, in, in mostly in initiatives that have to do also with uh, women, diversity, uh, gender. I also like uh, with Vara, I participated here in Food Coding, uh, that is an initiative uh, to uh, teach programming to uh, newcomers to Sweden. So uh, yeah, that's also something that uh, occupies my time. Yeah. And, and, and today, again, we are trying a new format. We, it's not me or Chris. We are trying to be dynamic and also invite you to dialogue in the end. Uh, and it's important to, show, to hear our stories because, again, I've been brought up that I can do it whatever I want in my life. It doesn't matter that I'm a woman, as long as I have a passion for what I want and I am stubborn in what I want to do. So I, I start studying mathematics a lot. I was going a lot in competitions and maths was my, my tough part. I was good at that. So I start going to university, but I was thinking to be a teaching in, to teaching math. And then uh, my first uh, day in university, I remember one of the famous professor, which was supposed to be my mentor, he had made a very bad comment about being a woman in math. And I said, oh my God, this is not me. So at that time, I have decided to move from his mentorship group. And it was one place left in a computer science uh, group. So I said, oh, I moved to computer science. And then I discover a completely new world which kind of took me unprepared. So it was so beautiful to learn coding, to be, to learn computer science, to do whatever things. And computer was at the beginning. It was not like today. You were just discovering the world. So I started, you know, university and I then I, I remained at university and I, t I was teaching at university as a professor assistant. I learned, I teach computer science, C, C++, Borland, Pascal, you name it. Uh, and then one day I have uh, decided that uh, I try. I want to try something else. I was doing my PhD in statistics uh, and uh, mathematical anali anal analysis. And then Ericsson came at that time. I was in Romania, telecom. I had no clue what it is. And then a friend of mine said, do you want to come to an interview? I said, yeah, what is that about? And then I took a job as a going back as a software developer a woman there, one woman in a whole telecom having no clue what is about telecommunication, just knowing how to code. And I started as a tester. Start tester with the software and hardware, which was really cool. A lot of men around me. I did, uh, you are young, you don't realize that you are alone there. So you start, you show up, you, you show interest, you learn and you prove yourself. And as you go in the career, you see, okay, you get tasks, you see that you are good, you can develop. The first time when actually I realized what is to be a woman in the tech is when I, I became a, a line manager. And I had to have uh, uh, people reporting to me, which were one of the men was our best friend at that time, <laughs> a family friend. And he got very annoyed that I am his boss. So it was the first time when I realized that, okay, so we are not equal any longer. Again, we were friends and now since I'm your boss, I'm not equal. Of course, we, we get together, uh, we, we got friends, but I real it was the first time when I realized that the women and men are seen differently. The more you progress in the career. As an engineer, maybe you get not the best uh, tasks. It's okay, but the more you go up in the hierarchy, it becomes tougher. Then I moved, uh, that was in Denmark, so I worked for quite, quite some years in Denmark. I moved to Sweden in Ericsson in a very masculine world because telecom is a masculine world. It's a lot of people coming from Lund University with a lot of technology. Uh, and then you have to gain your respect there in a, in a world man where you have to know, I know technology, I know hardware, I can speak about it. And then as you grow again in the career, you need to step up. You need to show that you, you know who you are and that's competence that it matters. It doesn't matter what this is a man or it's a woman, but you can always see that you sit alone, you are alone at the table of a man and you have to step up. You have to dare to speak. And we'll share with you later some tips how I have survived in this world. After that, I moved to other companies. But today, today I am called vice president of the technology at IKEA. So it's quite an important. I have about 600 people reporting to me. But I feel like it's my mantra to help other women to grow. We want to, to bring people, to, to bring women in tech. And it's starting from early phases when 
young girls, they want to uh, learn about coding and they have to be passionate about them. We want to bring them the passion. We want to inspire the way we can progress and how they can change the world through technology. So that's where I hear. Still very much promoting in my team, the diversity. I was one time actually looking for male managers <laughs> because I had too many ladies in my team. <laughs> My journey, is, even though Anka and I were very different, like if you meet us outside work, uh, we have very similar journeys. Like uh, I was studying computer science and I was like, uh, it was five non-transgender male out of uh, 77 persons in the whole program. Uh, first job, two out of 60. Second job, one out in a team of 10. Third job, 11 out of 130. It's always the same. It's like, it's, it's improving, but uh, still, it's always the same. The first, uh, I feel uh, I was lucky because my first manager was a very strong woman, and I think role models matter, so I think that woman impacts me a lot, like to feel like if she got there or something, it would be a natural progression for me, for me to maybe go there. And then uh, I also was in a team of uh, very experienced men, and they, they were old, and they, I think they didn't care, or actually, to this day, I'm not sure, because uh, I was always like the one that was taking like the task that nobody wanted. Like this is hard or like this is like oof. And I would always take it. And I don't know if it's because I'm a person that I like challenges or because I felt I was the only one and I had to prove myself constantly. Like I felt I had to earn my place. Whereas maybe like a, a cisgender male or something in the world of, tec of technology, they feel like they own the space. So I don't know to this day why I did that, but uh, I felt like very much part of the group. And then very much like Anka, when I became a manager is when I started feeling it. I started feeling like from one day to another you get that title and then things that they, you could qualify and people would take you seriously, then you were a lot more challenged. Then you don't see that the things were the same uh, for you. A lot of times when you are like a measured by the soft skills, right? Because when you are programming and your code is working and your work is there, nobody can disqualify that. It might you might end up doing things wrong as I did, why I was taking the harder uh, task. But at the end of the day, it's like it's black and white. But when you are a, when you are a manager, it's very easy. Like some attributes that are like positive in men are regarded as uh, negative in women, right? So then the, uh, and everything can be your imagination, you know? So then it's, uh, it's when you start feeling things. It's like, am I going crazy? Is this happening? Am I a bad manager? Um, and you start questioning those things. And uh, then it was uh, at, the, um, at that time when I started uh, getting interested on that. I had to find out like why my, the perception of myself has changed from like one month to another. I mean, like what happened? So it's, um, it's when I got into, um, into gender and diversity and those things. And um, yeah, being the only one is not cool or easy. Like some people is like uh, a lot of times when uh, I'm making video games and uh, I'm programming. Ah, how cool, or the this, or no, it's not. It's like uh, everybody's dressed in white and you have a red T-shirt. It's <laughs> like uh, everybody notices what you're doing r right or wrong. So uh, when you do something wrong, it's amplified. When you get the, uh, you know, it's like uh, you're very easy to spot. And uh, that is not necessarily good. It can be very tiring. You know, like have to maintain certain level of perfection. Yes. It's, um, yeah. And then, um, yeah, it's not your imagination. Like, and it wasn't my imagination <laughs> <laughs> when I realized that uh, becoming a manager was like uh, changing the, the rules. Um, women get paid less. Uh, in overall industries, it's uh, 19, but in the technology, it's even more. Uh, there is a big uh, glass ceiling. A lot of people start, but as you progress in the, in the ladder, it's less and less and less. And then the, there's been a, 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 a lot of studies, uh, for example, like uh, people uh, rating their, uh, their managers. And the uh, women get uh, rated uh, more positively, and this is, of course, in teams that uh, they reach their goals. And, and they, but again, when we see that uh, they are, uh, I mean, they are good managers, right? Like, people, <laughs> people like to have women as managers. They don't get promoted. And these are teams that are having the same results. So why is that? 
why if someone is actually making a better job and the results are there, is it still someone is being promoted? Also, like when it comes uh, with uh, like the so-called uh, microaggressions, interrupted, uh, or uh, someone has an idea and instead of uh, and she's Mary and they say no, as John said, no, sorry, it wasn't Mary. That's <laughs> it. So or uh, this kind of things, um, as people uh, moves in the career are more and more apparent. So again, it's like the people becomes a target. And uh, um, yeah, there is a very uh, a big glass ceiling. Also, there are. Um, many studies about uh, people giving up, meaning uh, people uh, might see us as a, as a success story, but uh, are we a success story? Meaning, I studied to be a programmer. Am I a programmer now? Why I also changed to management? Or why I was, uh, you know, some of those things are to be thought of, you know, like was it harder to be in that environment that made me choose something else? I mean, because at the end you get tired of some stuff, you know, so you really have to perseverate. To, um, to get there, yeah. And maybe a little bit of the story. We think that uh, the world was always unequal, but I'm not sure if you have been curious a little bit to read about the history, and I was, I read a very interesting book where it actually shows that in inequality didn't come now, it just came 8,000 years ago, but the people, men existed for what, 10 years, 10,000 years ago. And when this happened, this inequality happened, is actually when agriculture has started. And why is that happening? It's because people have started to accumulate uh, more stable food, more food, and they wanted to take care of the home. And then suddenly, the women and the men got different. Women remaining at home, taking care of the house, of the children, one man going hunting and bringing food. And this is really, is not again, it's not my imagination. It's really <laughs> proved by DNA analysis of the bones that they found in uh, China, uh, in, uh, uh, in Africa, where they proved that the, f the way the women and men were, um, were fed it before 10,000 years ago was the same. So they were hunters, they were gatherers, so they were going together in, uh, in folks to go to, to find, to, to live together in, uh, in as, as soon as they go after 8,000 years, you can see the difference. You can see in China, you can see in other places where they found bones. And what is also very important is that if you look at the chimpanzees families, uh, they live in a very hierarchical and a gender split uh, communities. So what they have actually made the difference between very early men uh, and chimpanzees was that at that time, men and women were equal, while in the chimpanzees family there was not inequality. It was inequality. So that's why I said, we are now probably trying to bring back <laughs> the 10,000 years <laughs> uh, equality. And it's a tough job. It's a really tough job. So if you want to read more, I put a link. And uh, yeah, it's a very good book to, to read about. Then this, uh, this information here is a, uh, well, the first one actually is something that uh, uh, I always believe to be true. And actually, I found an article that backs it up. Recent, recently, <laughs> like reading uh, about the stuff. The, um, I always felt that the younger people are the ones that uh, have uh, bigger gender biases. Uh, like uh, I attributed to the uh, older men have worked already because I mean like the stereotype would be like the young is more into gender things are more accepting. And you know the old ones, uh, they are very traditional and you know like, uh, uh, but uh, in my experience has never been the case. Like the old programmers or the older people around me about uh, 40, 50 plus, I think they work with women in the past. I think they don't feel threatened. They feel very secure of their own skills, so they don't care who they're working with. Whereas maybe the younger people, this stereotype of, uh, even though involuntarily, they still have that bias of what is the stereotype of uh, a programmer or this. And they have it in their head because they haven't seen anything other than the usual stereotypes. And also, Usually, like, younger people tends to want to prove themselves, and maybe they target the weakest link or what they think is the weakest link. So I think um, the younger people, uh, yeah, are a bit more biased when it comes to the workplace. And um, actually, there is, a, like, a, a, a real study, like, <laughs> contrasted and cited in many places, a scholar Google. Uh, uh, is the, I think it's the um, English government that uh, actually backs it up. So it's, uh, it's not uh, your imagination. <laughs> and uh, 
Uh, also, one thing is like, um, I feel uh, sometimes I have these biases and I cut myself thinking like, please don't be an ass, don't think this, you know, like, why are you thinking this? And uh, um, and an exercise that I do to myself when someone uh, annoys me or something, uh, I think is like, would I be thinking the same thing of this person if it would be a man of 45 year old in a suit? Or is it because uh, it's uh, this type person looking this way or something like they, then uh, that exercise is actually quite helpful because uh, at least to me, sometimes it's a, uh, it makes me catch me like uh, having a, a, a thought that I shouldn't have be, be having. And, and I mean, I think the important thing is that uh, um, to actually realize, you know, like uh, biases are a bit automatic and involuntary. Like uh, we need to retrain our, uh, our brain. Um, also an important note, um, you are more likely to feel biased as many, as many majorities someone has. There is only minorities and the double, triple minorities. So for example, uh, if you are a Swedish woman, you are likely to be a one minority. But me and I'm immigrant and uh, I'm a woman, so then I'm a double minority. If I would be uh, of color, then I would be a triple handicap. Uh, so the, the more you add minorities, the more likely you are to uh, have uh, a diversity and a bias towards uh, that person. So the, when uh, you cut yourself in situations thinking, ah, this, I mean, maybe make the exercise. If it would be a person that uh, is not belonging to any minority, would you actually think that? Um, also, like, uh, um, I was a bit more into activism and, uh, and uh, putting up a fight uh, when I was younger. Uh, time has uh, mellowed me a bit. <laughs> and uh, I also learned that um, some battles are not worth it. I mean, sometimes it's just better to let it go. I mean, uh, getting angry every time someone says something out of line or something, it's, it's, it's not going to, to, uh, to give you anything in the long term. You're just going to be that person and the, 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 pers the people will react against you. And uh, it's not about winning that battle, it's about winning the war. And uh, for that, it's a change of culture. And, um, and instead of putting up a fight, it's uh, respectful ways and uh, situations that you can make a bigger impact and a bigger change than actually putting up a fight. Like if someone says something out of line, maybe not call it out in front of everyone, but maybe afterwards say like, did you notice that this happened? Were you sure you meant it this way or something? And then that person will not become the enemy, but maybe learn something and that will be make a, positive, a more positive impact in the, in the workplace or the culture that, they, that you belong to. Um, and also like uh, um, there are many studies that uh, uh, women and the diverse groups were better. And they, they is attributed to different things. Like if you have a diverse group, people have different ideas. If everybody comes with the same background from the same place, they are likely to have the same solution to the same problem. If you have people that come from different places, uh, they, they come up with different things. So backgrounds give them different resources to come up with uh, solutions. Um, but then one thing that, again, this is uh, not scientifically proven, I think it's like uh, a bit like with the history of Anka, but I think like um, to this 8,000 8, 8, years of inequality, uh, men have been there hunting <laughs> and doing the hard work. Thank you. But uh, the women <laughs> have, <been laughs> have been at home organizing stuff, dealing with the stuff and uh, making that things happen. Nowadays we go to the supermarket, we don't go hunting. And uh, most of the office work has to do with actually organizing and interacting. So I think uh, the ones that have the privilege are actually the less likely to be doing the job well according to evolution. I think somehow. It's time so to <laughs> take it back. <laughs> so it's time to take it back exactly <laughs> those 8,000 years. Um, so I think, uh, I think there is something there, like uh, why, um, why groups with women actually were better. I think like we have, I mean, and also it's like in a serious note, like uh, empathy and soft skills, all these tests uh, usually we score better and that's good for group dynamics. And a little bit of uh, how to find your mechanism to, to actually thrive in this kind of uh, of a male dominate uh, medium. And I think I, I share a little bit of my experience. It's, and I say dare to sit at the table. What, what I mean by that? Uh, in a f 
room full of men where you have to go and pre preach your idea. You have to be there. You have to be there. You have to be present. You don't have to doubt yourself. There is nothing. It doesn't matter you are a woman. You are there for what you know. And no one should look at you as a woman or as a man. I think sometimes if you have the powerful to think the opposite, that move it into your advantage. I'm someone different, and that I can use it in my, in my advantage. And that's a strong story. Chris, you want to help me? Yes, to that note, there is um, a lot of studies that the women uh, sell rate a lot lower than men. Yeah. So then uh, uh, a lot of uh, people would not dare to sit there and to participate because we sell rate as we know less. So correct yourself. Yeah. Think if I know 75%, no, you're self rating your. Several things. And I have a very good. <laughs> I have a very good. Uh, I did a very good experiment. I, I'm hiring managers, and I have an ad out, and I have given two different people, women and men, my, the, the ads, and I got reaction friends, colleagues from my men, from my women friends. They said, "Oh, I need to know A, B, C, D. Ah, that's not a job for me." My male friends, "Oh, this is a perfect job for me. I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't. But I am fly." So <laughs> actually, this is exactly how we think, and that's also the way we need to, uh, we have it on the next slide, sh talking about maybe how we can adjust the way we write ads so we can address more to women, and then we raise their confidence. Tr trust yourself. Again, the world is open, and of course, you are not the perfect when you apply for a job, because there's you are all probably looking for jobs now or in the future. You need to trust yourself, and you say, this is how what I can do, I can learn, it's more about the power of learning yeah. and adapting than the knowledge. Of course, you need to have a base, of course. Please. So that was one story. A second one, it's a lot of women. It's about don't leave the workforce. And what I mean here is w we are women. We will have kids soon. Or some of us will have kids sooner or later in our life. And then the brain sometimes of us is, is leaving the workforce too early, meaning you don't even have the kids. You already have painted the room, you have already bought the clothes, you have already imagined when he's going to the kindergarten. So again, stay in the workforce, be in the work. The men are not like that. The men are still focusing on the work. They know that they will have kids at home, but they are still working. So don't leave too early. Leave when the time it is. Don't leave a year before you have it. <laughs> so stay in the workforce. And then an another, another, uh, another experience I had, uh, you know, in my early stages uh, working in the mobile phone. Again, going to speak to a very senior engineer, me as a manager, sometimes dressing maybe a little bit high heels, you know, depending on the mood. You, you can send the wrong image and then he comes, oh, this is a, who is this lady coming to talk to me about a very s difficult hardware piece? A and he takes you very easy, but as when you start talking, he realizes that you actually, if I'm not the assistant of someone, I'm really there to ask him about what he's doing. And I could take it in two ways. Either I can be very annoyed of saying, oh my God, who is this guy? Or I take it with a smile. So I think, find your ways. I can say, okay, he thought that I'm an assistant. That's fine. It's better to be an assistant and then you know I have all the answers. So it's about how you find your internal mechanism to fight all this kind of a misjudging and st stereotype. And I said, take it with the humor, humor and think from his perspective, yeah. This is, it's actually really bad that all, it's a stereotype that all assistants should have high heels. I can be a very good engineer and still wear high heels. <laughs> but uh, think something that, be a perseverant optimist. I, it's a book, a very nice book about stubborn positivity, about how women that in 70s started to change the environment and the world, and they never thought that they would succeed. And that's a very good book that, now we are still doing small steps, but we are taking small steps. And it's a big difference compared to many years. So my and tips. They always try to assume that people is trying to do their best. If you think like uh, the, sometimes people might do wrong. Sometimes people might say something wrong. But I mean, generally people don't want to be a uh, outspoken misogynist or having a, a stereotype or a, or want to put you down. I mean, there might be some, but generally it's uh, unconscious. So have mercy. And they also like, uh, if you realize and the other one no like thinking and yourself, I'm the lucky one that actually is, is, is realizing this. And then in a, in a positive setup and in when it's the right moment, maybe let that person know. That will, that will create a positive outcome. That person will know better next time. If you uh, get angry, like uh, probably you have a bad feeling inside you, so you are suffering, so that the uh, bias is winning over you, so you're 
having a bad moment inside you. And also if you get angry, that person will be like uh, maybe having a reaction to that, you know? And the, the goal here is everyone to be more equal, right? So it's not uh, about uh, that situation, it's about the bigger picture. So it's uh, always assumed that most people, I mean 90% of the people or 99 uh, actually mean well. So it's, yeah, assume goodness. Not always the case, but uh, yeah. And then, uh, as I said, me and Chris, we are here to help. We, we have kind of proved our ways to, to be unicorns. I'm sitting alone in my team. I'm the only woman there. I'm fighting to get people on. What are we doing? So, of course, we are sharing our experience. Uh, we are speaking in conferences. Uh, Chris and I, we have been just before Corona time to a big conference, a w women conference in Grace in uh, Orlando, Grace Hopper. And it was an amazing um, uh, event because we, have we had the opportunity to meet 20,000 young ladies, 20,000. It was a huge event. It just give you like uh, you know shivers and you know b bumps in your. It's to see ten thousand young ladies coming and looking for jobs and talking to you. And we had a stand uh, both uh, for IKEA trying and w w was was a great experience. Then we try to insp inspire with our stories, uh, mentoring. We 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 mentor our young uh, leaders, the young managers. I'm not so much in volunteering. Sorry, Chris is very very good in very vol uh, volunteering. But also we try to bring positive discrimination, meaning, for example, when I'm recruiting, I'm really searching for women. So I a little bit trying to bring women. I'm when I go to university to speak to, I'm trying to convince young ladies to stay in technology, to get the passion, to understand how great things they can do. We want to be ambassadors of our companies with the diversity. We speak at many conferences and uh, recruiting, recruiting fairs showing that uh, we want to embrace gender diversity at our companies. We encourage, we support. In our circle, we always try to call out when we see differences in, uh, and people reacting wrong. Um, yeah, we call out inequality in a very respectful way. Uh, and definitely, we celebrate our achievements. We are great, we are great women. <laughs> Um, this first line is uh, something that is, uh, it was uh, the World Summit of Social Development, like uh, all, the, all the nations got together and they made a phase about equality, not only with gender, but equality. And then uh, in 2008, uh, a group of experts, that it was uh, experts on the matter, uh, chosen by uh, all the nations, uh, gathered together in Helsinki and did uh, a rewrite of that, what it means, uh, like uh, make it uh, current. They came with that, basically, it means uh, everybody has the right to exist. If you're a human, uh, you should be treated everyone equal. Um, but then uh, we look at the numbers, and it doesn't look like we are equal, or we're going to be equal any um, anytime soon. There is the equality index, that is like a, a quite renowned uh, place that they do statistics and gather information. It's going to take a uh, hundred years for that. And uh, there might be a remote areas in the world where it's very inequal here and they work in tribal ways and uh, but uh, they in Europe for us is 60 years um, I'd be dead <laughs> 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 me too <laughs> 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 then the uh, World Economic Forum um, for cisgender women is a bit better is 43 for the non cisgender women is 73 and then the, the United Nations are a bit uh, more positive they have uh, these goals for 2030. They have uh, goals for education, uh, for like uh, how to improve. And the goal number five is to uh, achieve the gender equality and empower all women. They have a lot of, uh, if you go to the page, uh, we have uh, later um, a slides with some useful links. They have a number of initiatives in there on how to achieve them. Me personally, from what I read in the matter and stuff, I think 2030 to have an equal uh, world in the Europe, Western, uh, is a bit ambitious. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, I think it's uh, a very good thing to keep uh, pushing and to move in uh, things in one direction. So um, our leaders, like the world leaders, want uh, something equal, but it's not happening. So there is a mismatch uh, there. And uh, we all need to help. Like everybody can do, uh, can do things from their own position. It's not uh, someone else's problem. Meaning a lot of people is like they live everyday life and uh, some people have more uh, impactful positions. 
some people have less, but that doesn't mean that nobody is of the hook. A lot of people, uh, maybe it's like, yeah, my, the world is uh, very unfair and very unequal for me, but uh, there are a lot of things that we can do every day, like uh, small things. And those things are the ones that matter because they change your surroundings and the culture. And then from there it emerges up. It's not like uh, because uh, some president of some country says, now we're equal. It, it doesn't happen. It's our small behaviors that we have with each other that will make that equal, right? So the, um, these are some tips, like uh, easy stuff. I, I actually like, uh, I try to do a lot of this in the workplaces where I, I've been. Um, form a support group at your work. Gather, uh, gather people and uh, have a lunch once a month and talk about things that might happen, some microaggressions, something, or if you don't want to talk about what happens every day, find a topic about gender equality or something. Find uh, like an article, send it to people two days before, and then you can discuss the article at that lunch. And that they uh, also creates awareness, because there is people that don't think about it, and they usually, like the people, usually, I mean, for example, now, um, we are mostly women here. Like the, the, so then it's more about support than awareness, right? Like people that maybe should be listening to this is not the people that attend these things, right? So thank you for those that came. <laughs> <laughs> and the, um, also call it out. I think like uh, when something needs to be said, needs to be said in a respectful way, as we said before, but say it. I mean, don't be afraid of being that person. If you say it right, it's, it's fair. It's fair to say it. Get into market inequality. Me, every time someone, uh, that is not a cisgender male that's something well at work, I say <laughs> yes, 20 times to everyone. <laughs> so it's like, uh, be, uh, do marketing. It's like uh, about promoting ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, because that's the story. Then people get like, ah, this person did something good, gives visibility to those good acts and to that person. And then brings uh, like, some people is very quiet. They don't know what they're doing in that corner. Show it. Um, be mindful of your own language and the jokes that you laugh. If, uh, if you laugh to a machist joke, then don't, don't they, then complain about inequality or something. Don't make it yourself. Uh, also try to be inclusive in your language. Own it, like uh, it's fine to be that person that sometimes uh, says something, for example, at my work, uh, nobody will make a machist joke in front of me. Like, uh, and that uh, they might also be something that creates some way of working, you know, like people tries to behave that way and then it becomes a bit forced, but it also becomes a way of uh, doing it. So own it, it's fine that people knows that you are not okay with those things and that uh, it's better to be like um, more politically correct and things like that, that creates a change. Own it, it's fine. Outside, outside work matter, I mean, we've been talking a lot about the workplace, but uh, the workplace is uh, a subset of our lives, right? Also we have, uh, I have two sons. I want them to uh, be not as biased as I am when they grow up. I want that they experience the world uh, in a more equal way. And that, uh, as we saw in the previous slides, for us is, is late, but uh, for them it's not. Um, so if you don't do it for yourself to call it and to own it, do it for them. Um, also, like, uh, if you don't feel like there's people that like to do things and there's people that don't. So if you don't feel like driving any initiatives, don't drive them but then be a pain in the ass to those that can drive it. Go to HR, uh, like uh, they can do some bias training, they can do workshops, they can also do, for example, uh, CVs. When people read, like the manager receive the CVs, receive them without a name. So you don't know if it's a man, a woman, or if someone is uh, Swedish, or if someone that is an immigrant. You know, those are very easy things that uh, can be done inside a company. Um, also, like whatever your work is, if you are, for example, working with UX, or you are working, uh, there is a way of putting that equality there. You can make more inclusive design, you can make uh, a lot of things like marketing. For example, there is a lot of tools nowadays that uh, check for inclusiveness. Like they are even uh, online uh, online tools. Like you just put there and they tell you like how to correct the pronouns, and uh, so it's, uh, it's a more inclusive text. So there is a lot of things. Also code. Both in uh, several companies I work, a lot of programmers use inappropriate words, like uh, body parts and something to call variables. <laughs> and uh, yes, <laughs> yes, I've seen it in many companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so uh, the, in the, where I'm working now, we got uh, something to check for inappropriate language. 
so the uh, yeah so you cannot use certain words to call variables anymore <laughs> 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 then uh, um, uh, choose who you support is very easy there is this uh, website there is a a, um, a diversity um, meter that there are certain parameters and you can get certified and Google, uh, like all the big companies, go through this process, and here you see how they rank. So you can choose to buy from company A or company B, and uh, this is um, is very thorough. There are a lot of companies. So the and also that they try to get certified is also a, is already a thing, right? Um, educating the topic. Me, I'm 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 not an expert on this thing, or, but it's something that for many years I've been reading about. And uh, every year, I like there is these reports that get uh, updated, and it interests me, and I, I read it, and then people ask me, and then I tell them, and I think those things make a, a, a impact. You know, nobody needs to be the mega expert or anything; just having an interest uh, goes a long way. And then uh, um, diversity and equality and inclusion has to do a lot uh, with respect. Like they are uh, to be yourself. That's also like one of the most revolutionary things you can do. It's like, um, yeah, just be and free start to with be yourself. Yes. You are respectful for others, they will turn back to you. Mm. Very, we will not talk about. This is links that we can share later. Or exactly, the like the most of the uh, graphs and data yeah. that is being in the presentation is from uh, these uh, three first links. There are like some of uh, very renowned um, uh, yeah, studies that come every year. Um, and then uh, some research about groups, and then you have yeah, the one of the UN. Yeah. And also one uh, very interesting one is like people usually don't look at the Women's Day website, but the Women's, uh, women's page, like the International Women's Day, 8th of March, they have a lot of resources. And they have also um, like information for you to read, but they also have, for example, games to do in the, in the, um, in the workplace about equality and the, they have a lot of like, uh, you can download stuff and print and also things to do at home with kids. So they have uh, a lot of uh, fun resources. And then, yeah, and then there is um, some more, see, for example, this one actually is like the, the resources. The resources. It's, I think it's, it's interesting. It gives ideas. And then the, yeah, and then the, some more information. We don't say more on this. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, we also want to give you some tips yeah. about how to get into uh, technology and uh, your entry level, as we saw before, if you are not a cisgender male, you might experience some biases from the moment that you send your CV, um, depending who it gets it. So one of them is uh, you might not even be a programmer yet, or you might not even care about technology. And um, to coding, here we have uh, Vara running yeah. it. I think some of you are part of the program, so you know all about it. But uh, the it's very hard, it's six months. And uh, um, a lot of people quit. The beginning is easy, then it gets harder, harder. It demands a lot of uh, work from you at home to be able to keep up, soon people get a bit lost. But uh, the, if you finish, if you are one of the finish, they all got jobs and they all got internships. So it's like uh, you need to flow through, but it's a warranty thing here. Like, uh, the <laughs> There is a uh, 42 nonsense male that found jobs, so actually it's more than males, and 25 males. Uh, they're working at taxis, IKEA, uh, video game companies, and uh, some of them have been following their, their journey, and they're, they're so cool. Like, yeah, really great. It happens on Sundays morning, so it doesn't interfere that much with your life. Like, also people with families and other obligations usually are in the weekdays. It's uh, Sundays morning. It's taught uh, uh, Vara finds uh, professionals and she organizes everyone and coordinates everyone. I don't know how she does it, but uh, the, it's people that is working out there in roles. So it's like they're not teaching you like blah, blah, blah. They're teaching you things that are useful and you're going to need. And it's fair hand. Um, it's not required entry level. Like uh, Vara looks at all the applicants. She tries to make a mix of people that uh, also people will be able to learn about culture and, and adapt and the, and have good interactions. And the, some people come with the, another country, like knowing how to program, knowing something. But the, I know one of the things that she's really like, uh, like looking at is uh, the motivation. If this person is really like from the few spots that there is, if this person is really going to put the effort. I mean, like the important thing is to want to learn. If you really want to, 
it's, it's, you will learn. And then um, it's like programming, it's a bit of culture and how to interact, how things are happening in Sweden. And also there is a, um, there is a help like uh, at the end of the program on how to find a job, how to make a CV. She also organized a speed dating with like, sometimes it's been like 20 companies and then you get five minutes to present yourself and then you could get a proper interview. So there is a lot of help uh, to, um, to get into the technology world from Food Coding. Uh, in the Food Cafe website, you find the link and all the information. Then uh, also, like uh, I work at IU Interactive, we have opened a lot of positions. So if you know how to program or even not know how to program, we're looking for UXers, we're looking for artists. Um, send me your CV, you can find me in LinkedIn and go to um, career.io.dk and uh, send me your info, we yeah. talk. And the same for IKEA, we are hiring. We, we are actually not very good yet. We, don't, we are not 50-50 female versus male in, um, in technology. So I just put for 31 pe uh, female in digital roles and 35 almost in manager roles. We want to increase the number of women in digital and we are also w hiring software engineers, engineer managers, data, data you, you just name it. We also fight a lot for equal pay, so it's not only about male and women. We ha it's also, we, we see still even in IKEA, which you don't think, there is a difference in the payment between male and women, and we try to equalize and make sure that we are equally paid. So go, go on IKEA.com, find the place where you can uh, go to career on career uh, um, portal and uh, apply for jobs. We are hiring 2,000 two people, so just find your place. Yes, and now that's uh, your turn. Any questions? <laughs> yeah? Uh, we need to give you the microphone. The manager. Microphone manager. Yes, no. <laughs> Thank you, sorry. Um, so my, my main, um, like do you have any major advice for just the first time, like finding the first job or, and, and not being afraid when you see job applications that are like three plus years or X amount of things that you're not quite confident about just yet? Okay, you start for uh, at least on my place, we are looking for juniors a lot. I, I, in again, every team. So you have to start with the thing that a team is should be diverse. We are not looking. If we say five, three years, we look for a, a perfect candidate, but we always we want to balance the team. So I actually in my teams, I really look to have lots of engineers that are really junior because they come with the new ideas from university, fresh with with different ties, and then we keep them in the team. They grow, and of course, they will get a mentor, a senior. So things that. You know, think a little bit better about yourself. Don't be, don't be shy. Just, just go with the flow. If you don't get it, there is always a next time. Yes, That's my uh, advice. <laughs> yes, the first job in a, in a country that is not yours is the hardest. Yeah. I mean, uh, you, you probably are facing many bias. You are more not the only ma minority. You have a, but uh, the one, if you think that you know you have 50%, probably you have 75. So also correct yourself. I know a bit more. So. Yes, there, Pep. And then also one thing that I think has been very helpful for people around me, find a mentor. I mean, there is technology is everywhere. I mean, you can, uh, like in driving schools, to uh, hospitals, video games, Ikea, I mean, there are this technology everywhere. If is that what you're interested, probably you can know how it done. Maybe you are interested in technology in bank. Then uh, um, nowadays we have LinkedIn. We live in a very connected world. If there is a woman that inspires you, be bold 
Pero para la gente, hey, um, I really would like to have a similar job like you one day. I'm starting, I don't know where to start, can you help me? Because uh, a lot of industries have their own tricks and their own things that uh, maybe it's better to highlight in a CV or not having that recommendation. Also networking again, because uh, when you see a CV, there are many CVs that are the same. That if you've been someone you've met somewhere, that makes uh, that uh, that uh, maybe makes you more connect to that person. So that gives you an extra. So also do the effort to go to those networking events. And uh, also one thing uh, here in the uh, food cafe, I was helping with um, with a uh, with a class about making your own CV. Because uh, I don't know how to make a CV, but I get to read a lot of them. And I know what uh, I like, and I know what draws me off. Um, make the CV correct. I mean, having a, a, a CV with the wrong formatting that you've been sitting there seven hours to make, and you didn't get the right formatting, that means that you're not attentive to detail. You're not attentive to detail, probably you're not good coding. So those things, those mistakes that are before and that are under your control, be sure you don't make them. Also, like if you use a template, put some color. Like that person has received that template 25 times. Also, don't write a testament. People is not going to read a CV of 20 pages. So be very clear on what you want to communicate. That will make the person reading that CV more agreeable. So there are a lot of uh, those things that you can control prior. And those things will help you. Let me just remind me that again, I'm reading 1,000 CVs. When you make something that is yours, so there are templates, there are colors. No, Chris likes colors. I don't like colors. So this is very, <laughs> this is very personal. See, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually I'm very black and white. I I say oh this is yes, colors. Yes, but also video games. Yeah. IKEA is different uh, industry. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but but make what is your what brings you what what is the click what what I bring you different and write it in the intent letter in the CV. Write it. This is how, what I can bring. This is what I have done. This is my success story. Come it personally, so don't use only templates and colors, my view. <laughs> but also what I've learned actually with a good friend of mine, she went through some interviews and she failed, and why? Don't take it too easy. E treat it, so everything you do in your life, make it serious, prepare it. Go there like full 100% in that. Go, read how you do it, read about the company, read about the position, uh, look on LinkedIn, the people that are working there. Uh, Try to imagine the dialogue. Try to answer questions yourself. You know, prepare before. What if he's asking me about uh, what is the book, last book you read yesterday? Because this question have a meaning to understand. You are curious. Do you want to 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 start continue learning? How do you integrate in the team? How you co can explain what you are doing? I'm really asking about people about vision. How do you see your not yourself, but how do you see this area in five years? Read about what are the cool things happening in the area. Uh, if I give you a problem, how would you solve this one? So have already, you know, prepared and uh, read about the, the, the role as such in, in everywhere. So don't, don't go 50%. Today, uh, Today it's close. More questions? More questions. So I just wanted to add to that as well. If you're at an interview and it's a question that you don't have the answer to, write them down take the time to kind of, okay, so, so what is my answer when I'm not stressed and you know, put up against the wall to, to have those, because the next time that question comes and you just blah, 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 and they're like, oh my God, she, she, that person just knew that, you know, then, then you have that bonus. See them as practice for the job you really want. Apply for jobs that you maybe don't want and just practice being in interviewed as well. More questions? What were we? Are we Pizza? Done? Pizza first? Uh, in yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we take a picture before you move? Yeah. yeah.